Hi there, it's Brad Gilbert here, and welcome to part four of How Do Bankers Trade Forex? And this is all about technical analysis, identifying the entry levels in the market. Now, this is one of the key areas that traders at the banks will sit and wait for. They will wait specifically for those key entry levels because they are sort of characterized as low risk, high probability. Why? Well, when they enter the market at these levels, they know there will be a shift in momentum okay, or they are backed up by support with either buying or sell orders. And this is the, the real mechanics of getting your trading system correct. You can have the direction right, but if you get the entry levels wrong, well, then you're going to come unstuck. And there's nothing more disheartening about sort of trading, losing money when you know what's going on. All right, so pay attention to this. It's very simple. Now, I guess, you know what, this is one area where traders Google the net sort of nonstop looking for, for answers. Where do I get in? They buy indicators, they buy robots, they buy all these things. But it's the simplicity model of support and resistance that I was trained in 1990, right? And this is the way uh, we were trained in New York, London, Sydney, all over the world, except for Japan. That was a little bit different, but I'll come into that. So this is the way traders globally are trained to, uh, to analyze the markets. Now, once you understand your simple technical setups and where those entry levels are, well, then sure, by all means, you can overlay some more advanced structure on top of that, whether it's Fibonacci's, uh, some moving averages and all these sorts of things. But understand, right, the people you see on TV, the analysts, they have like a two to three minute time slot to fill. Now, what they do is if they just came out and said, well, supports, uh, well, in Euro, it's at 117.50 and resistance is at 118.20. That's it. That's what the traders are focused on. But for that two minute time slot, that's not enough. So what they do is they sort of make it sound Hollywood. Okay, we've got Fibonacci retracements coming in at 118.20 and 10. There's support here from moving averages and Bollinger Bands and all sorts of all sorts of crap, right? So don't get caught up into what the economists or the analysts are talking about. Anything that comes out of a bank will be advertising, marketing, and it will have a whole heap of jargon in there. If you were not allowed to talk to the traders at the banks inside that inside those teams, they will tell you straight up, we've got support here, we've got resistance there, that's it. And that's what they focus on. All right, so for this section, what I want to do is, is just break it down into a simple format. I'll give you a bit of a slide presentation, and then I'll show you using Reuters Zenith how easy it is to draw these trend lines. And then you can sort of follow the market. Now, when we generally are drawing our technical analysis, what you're looking for, you're not looking for any answers. I'm just looking for, for a confirmation that the trend line is, is a good trend line. That usually comes with, say, three touches because then I'll know traders will focus in on it. And what we're trying to do with technical analysis, and this is very important, is you're not trying to find some fancy entry level that only you can see. We're looking to identify entry levels that the whole market can see and, most importantly, what the bankers are looking at. If you're not looking at the market the same as the bankers and where they enter the market, you could be working against them. Now, this is all about trading with the market, right? So if you identify the key entry levels that the bankers are using, and this is the way I'm going to show you how it works, well, then you're going to be working with the market and your results will show that, okay? I mean, you won't, you'll have more consistent results. You won't have that sort of up, down, up, down, 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 up, all, all over the place. This is about identifying the best trading opportunities, not just a trading opportunity, the best. And then once you know how to do that, then you can really isolate the really great trades where you've got sentiment, bias, and then a gorgeous entry level that sticks out like a sore thumb. All right. Now, let me take you through the slides and I'll come back and explain some more as we go through Zenith. Okay. The component of the market that most traders get wrong, right? It is simple. And what they usually do is they overcomplicate. Now, how do they do that? Well, it's actually quite simple, right? So just, let's just focus on where do you enter the market? Now, this is, you look at all the charts, you look at the currencies every day, and you're wondering, I can see it going up, but where do I get in? Because you can get those retracements which could knock you out of these trades before you get, actually get going. So what are the bankers focus on? Okay, well, they focus solely on support and resistance trend lines, right? Entry levels come from your trend lines, your technical analysis. Now, indicators. Now, let me just explain where these indicators uh, come from, okay? Now, are you using them for direction or entry? 
or both. Now, in that part three, fundamental analysis, we went through where the key sentiment comes from the central banks, and then the, the short-term bias comes from those economic data releases. That's why the currencies go up and down. Now, if you've got absolutely no idea about central banks, economic data releases, or fundamental analysis for that matter, well, the only alternative you've got is go and try and look at some uh, indicator, whether it's a Bollinger Band, uh, moving averages, parabolic stop and reverse, average directional moving index, MACDs, all these things, they're the only things you can rely on to potentially make your trading decisions. And I can tell you, once you understand the fundamentals, if you've been using these in the past, you will come back and just kick yourself, right? Because the, the fundamentals give us the direction. These indicators are for people who have got no idea what they're doing at all. And how is this different to the commercial traders? Well, they don't use them. Right? They don't use any of these. They haven't got time to sit there and wait for a three to four hour time lag for one of these indicators to tell them to buy or sell. Generally, if you're using these, you'll be buying when the market's selling and vice versa. And that's where you get those inconsistent results. So what, what's your job? Every day, when you come back to the market, it's all about technical analysis. Look for those entry levels. If you don't have them, well, that's it. There's none to be, none to be found. But if you do have some, well, then that's time to sort of really focus. As I said, isolating the key levels, okay, your trend lines, your support and resistance is the key to, to isolating those low risk, high probability trades. So technical trend lines, what are they? Well, this is kids play, okay? It's join the dots. Join the highs with the next high and you have resistance, right? It's as simple as that. You join the low to the next low and you have support. You get three of these lines touching points, then you've got strong levels and that's what we're looking for, all right? Resistance slopes downwards, support slopes upwards. Now, sometimes support can be horizontal if the levels are all horizontal. Don't start drawing horizontal lines just randomly through levels. Traders at the banks are very specific. They stick to the highs, and the, like for, for resistance, they will focus on the highest point to the next high. They don't go halfway through the level, and same for support. So technical analysis, okay, as I mentioned, support on the downside, resistance on the top side. And then you come across to where the current market is, right? And then you isolate where the currency is above those trend lines. So in this situation, Right? There is three levels, one on the downside, and you've got two resistance levels on the top side. They're the levels that traders focus on for their entry levels. Okay, We call them key entry levels, and that's what you need to get into your head. It's simplicity, and once you actually go back, you can go back over your charts and have a look through uh, the historical way these work, and you will see that you know, we're not making this up. Orders, where are the orders? Okay, well, you've got resistance on the top side, support on the downside. Inside those two levels, you'll have sell limit orders on the top side and buy limit orders on the downside. Outside, on, outside those two levels, on the top, you'll have buy stop orders and sell stop orders. This is why we know what to do and when to do it, at what levels, right? And that's what the bankers are focusing on because this, they know this is the way the market works, right? So focus on support and resistance at current market levels and you will know when momentum is shifting because these trend lines will tell you the answers. Now, trend line retracement. I just want you to understand the way technical analysis works, especially around breaks, okay? Now, say for example, we've got a support trend line and the currency's been above it for some time. Now, it comes over to the break level. Now, a lot of the time in normal market conditions, the currency will not explode down through these levels. But if you've already got a support level, when the currency breaks down through that support line, that support line will now become resistance, okay? Its, it's job has changed as soon as it breaks down through that level, okay? You need to understand that. It's, very, it's a very simple but important concept. Okay, so for example, if you've got the market sort of moving, as I said, above the trend line, this, this line will act as support the whole time until it breaks. You can see it bouncing off that trend line. But then once it breaks, it now acts as resistance 
from that from that point on straight away and this is the way the psyche the way traders and all the banks are trained so that may that may have been a support line for three months as soon as it breaks traders are now using it as resistance right very simple important trend line retracement principle all right so what else can i tell you about this all right well the first rule is now the currencies don't drop 100 points straight away, right? This is one of the key things where traders get a little bit psyched out and spending too much time in front of your computer can be detrimental. When you see a trend line break, right, the market takes time to get going. What happens is it enters the barroom brawl, and I'll explain what that is in a minute, but what you get, get is it breaks down, it comes back and retests the trend line a number of times, and then it starts to go. In this situation, You've got one, two, three, four, five tests of the trend line, and then it, then it shoots lower, right? So understand the way trend lines work or the currencies work when they break technical analysis levels, trend lines or support, there's a time period usually before the currency starts going. So the first half of the trade is very slow. And then you'll see straight after that, you see a very quick move to the downside, in this case, two hours, and it's gone you know, 70, 80, 90 points. That's where the cash is. So be patient around these breaks. The second rule, okay, as I just mentioned, the first leg can take four to six hours. And then the second leg is very quick. So don't sit in front of your screens and watch the price action. That will do your head in and have you second guessing yourself. So first of all, understand it takes time for the currencies to go, either up or down. And then the second part of the trade will be very quick. So make sure you don't waste your time sitting in front of the computer waiting for the cash to come in. You will do your head in and you'll be wasting a, a good part of your day. And trading is all about as, as much about lifestyle as it is being patient and consistent. All right, so that's one thing you can do to avoid things. Once your position is live, the ideal thing is give the market time to move. I would literally go over and pull the plug out of the PowerPoint to make sure you don't keep looking at the market. The market will do whatever it's going to do. You staring at the screens will not change the outcome. And you need to understand that. The technicals will take care of business. If you've got the fundamentals, working with the technicals, well then more often than not, you're going to be on a winning trade. So there's no need to watch the cash. The best thing you can do is come back and check it in three to four hours and see how much cash you've made then, all right? Then you can make some decisions around whether you take profit, let the position run, or do something else. All right, so trend line um, retracement once again. So just looking at this, you've got support, resistance. Okay, so how can I take advantage of this? Well, if it's in a sort of uptrend, you're not sure what's going on, you can place a pending stop entry below the trend line. Okay, this is the easiest way to take advantage of break trades. Don't get your, your order really close to the trend line because it's not until it moves more than 10 points outside that barroom brawl area that you get the consistent move. So the idea is you identify the current technical setup, okay? If you think there's a potential for a turnaround in the fundamentals, a breakdown of the technicals, we'll place a pending stop entry below that barroom brawl section and your order will be kicked in and the cash will just flow as the currency breaks down. It's pretty simple. Now, you can see down the bottom section of that chart, okay, I've got stochastics. Right, this is a real-time um, momentum gauge. Right? This is probably the only indicator I use that I've seen consistently used across all the banks. Okay, Stochastics, it's, it's a tool. It's a tool how traders can manage momentum. Now, when there's economic fundamental releases coming up, they're pretty useless. Right? You gotta understand when you can use it, when you don't. So when do stochastics apply? Well, normal market conditions, obviously. No economic data scheduled. They're a great tool for when there's no data because you're just trying to gauge when momentum is shifting. If there's no central bank announcements, once again, they come into play, no fundamentals. But they are very good for us to manage our positions. As I said, if you've put a trade on, let me just give you an example over here. If you've put a trade on and the currency's moved, say, 30 or 40 points in your favour and it's stalling, well, if, if the currency gets to a situation where it's oversold or overbought, well, then it may be a, a situation where you go, you know what, this is stalling on the downside, it's oversold, 
I'm going to start taking some of the position back. It's a great tool to manage positions. If the currency is if stochastics in mid-range, well then don't give it any sort of credence, right? Don't give it any sort of weighting. What you want it to be outside on the top side above 80 and below 20, they're your gauges. And that's what the traders are looking at. This is the same setup that the guys at the banks will have. And when stochastics are above 80, they would consider the currency overbought. So they would they would stop buying. And if it was below 20, they would consider it oversold and they would stop selling. Right? As I said, if, you're, if you've got a position when it gets to these extremities, it may be time to manage the position. Now, let me come back. So I've given you a, a sort of run through of technical analysis, the simplicity of, of support and resistance trend lines and trend line retracement, how it works. But the bankers look for specific entry levels. They look even harder than that. They look closer. And you may have heard me sort of saying there, the barroom brawl. Now, this is an area that I sort of describe as an uncertain trade zone, right? Now, where is it? Well, 95% of volume, or somewhere between 90 to 95% of volume, takes place around the trend lines. And that's where the market repositions itself for the next potential move. Now, the guys at the banks, right, 10 points either side of, the, of support and resistance, they know it gets sticky, right? They know it gets, there's a lot of orders in there, a lot of people trying to sort of uh, get in as with, with as little risk as possible. But what happens is it, it creates a, a massive amount of, um, well, there's a lot of trades turning over and a lot of uncertainty around whether it goes up or down. And you, and you see traders turning over their positions around these levels because they, they think it's going up and it's going down and it's up and down. It just does this all the time. So what trades at the banks do, they, they trade outside these. If they think it goes down, they will sell before resistance, okay, 12 or 13 points below. And if they're looking for a break, they wait for it to break at least 10 points before they get into the trade, right? It takes a long time to work this out, but I've, after almost 20 years in the banks, it's very easy to see when the decisions are made around putting trades on. So inside the bar room brawl, as I said, it's not a great place to trade. And the idea, why we call it the barroom brawl is, think of it this way, if you walked into a, like a biker bar, right, and they were smashing chairs over each other's heads, would you go inside and ask for a drink? Probably not. But if you did go to a nice bar, right, and there was just nice people sitting down, good music, you're going to sit down and have a drink. That's what you want to be doing. So that barroom brawl section is a very wild, erratic, non-directional area. So you want to try and avoid placing your pending orders inside there. Outside that, the currencies have more specific direction. So entering outside on the downside or above the market, that's where the cash is. Right? You will get into trades and more often than not be correct, especially on those break trades. So the barroom brawl range zone. Now, what are we talking about? Okay, we're talking inside support and resistance. Bankers sell inside the range against resistance and they buy inside the range on support. The break zone, well, this is easy. And this is one strategy you've really got to take advantage of. The bankers buy aggressively on the break outside that 10 points above resistance and they sell aggressively on a break 10 points through the support levels. Okay, I can tell you, this is, this is game time. So what you want to do is, as I mentioned before, avoid placing pending orders inside the barroom brawl. Why? Because you're getting caught. There's less chance of you getting set in the market. You'll miss a lot of the trading opportunities. Okay. So if you really want to, if you're confident with the direction of the currency, put the orders outside that because you will know you will get set. Okay. It may sound more aggressive, and it probably is, but you want, if, if you're going to be successful, you've got to be aggressive. But say, for instance, you come to the market, you've been busy all day and you've come into the market, you've just checked out what's going on. Well, occasionally you will enter, you'll, you'll come to the screens, right, and the currency's trading inside the barroom pool. Well, this doesn't change the concept, but what you can do is if you're very confident with direction, you can actually put a trade on with less risk, right, because it's already in there and say you're looking for a move to the top side, well, you know what, you can actually put a trade on here with a, with a shorter stop. So you can take advantage of that. But as I said, but that's just opportunistic. If you actually put this order on in the market, it probably gets set four times out of 10. 
okay, as a pending order. But if you come into it and it's on the trend line itself, well, then that's a chance for you to take advantage of the opportunity. And as I always say, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. You could get a nice trade on here with even less risk than what you usually would have in your trade plan. So trading live in the barroom brawl, okay. So, so basically the same position as a sell limit order, okay. You can actually sort of put, you, you know where the sort of parameters are to get it set in the position. So if you're getting set in the middle, as I said, you can actually uh, reduce your risk or you can actually give yourself uh, a bigger stop loss. In that sense, say for instance, you're trading around um, right on the trend line itself, you can still go in with your same trade plan, give yourself a bigger breathing space, okay, give you a bigger chance of staying in a position uh, with the same risk profile that you usually have. So you can take advantage, either reduce your risk or keep the same risk profile. And that's pretty much it, guys. The trading with technical analysis will show you where the gorgeous entry levels are. And this is a major, major component to being successful. Don't overthink it. Don't overcomplicate things with tricky indicators which are going to have you second guessing. Now, once again, if you have any questions around uh, identifying the entry levels, technical analysis, by all means, send us an email at info at tradersfortraders.com or jump on the live trade zone, the 247 trade zone, and you can ask us questions there. We're here to help. Now, as you would have heard in part three, fundamental analysis, this gives us a connection to the news uh, and all the economic data releases in real time. This is your connection to uh, the market trends or sentiment from the central banks, as I mentioned before, also the general bias that comes from the economic numbers. But funnily enough also, this is where the traders do all their analysis, right? They don't have a, generally a separate platform. We use MT4 as retail traders to execute our trades. But all their analysis is done on um, Reuters or Bloomberg for that matter. So what you're doing is you're just looking to join the dots, okay? As I said, here's a good example of, of a short-term trend line in the Aussie dollar. Now that trend line has broken. What you would generally do is, is remove the trend line. Okay, once it's broken short term, you're now looking for the next part of the trade. Now, what you can see here is now if I sort of bring in the, the um, scope of the downside, you'll start to see where the support lines are. Okay, now if I just go back over here to the daily charts, this is where I'll find the longer term uh, trends. So what I'll be looking for here is, okay, if I just come over here, I'll go down the bottom looking for support. I'll go to the, the most, uh, or the lowest low, and then I'll look for the next low from there. So if I just jump on that and I look for the next low, okay, this will be my long-term resistance level. Let me just get on that bottom line. Well, I'm not quite on the low there. So make sure when you are drawing these trend lines that you are very specific, okay? So there's our, our absolute low. So if I just come back here, because I can see where that is, now, you're looking for corresponding um, support levels. Okay, so we're going from the, the next low to the, the low after that, right? So we've got the, the long-term low down here around 62.11. Now, that's going back to 2001. Then your next support level on the uh, daily charts is at 70.90. And then from here, if I widen this back out into the current market, you can see there's a nice formation here, structure, you've got the starting point one, two, almost a third touch here. Now this is perfect technical analysis, right? You would be doing the same on the top side. So as you can see, going back to 2011, we've got a high at the top here. Now the next high from there comes in here in quarter one, 2013. That's our next major uh, resistance level. Now once again, you would find that high, the next high, most relevant high to the next high itself, which is not far off where the market was recently. So you've got a resistance line there. Now, these tools, once you get used to navigating around hourly and daily support, do will make a lot of sense. As I said, the more professional the tool, the more functionality and the more precise. Okay, so if I widen this out to bring the current market into focus, you can start to see very clearly right, where the support and resistance lines are that the bankers are looking at. Now, if I go back into the hourlies, right, this is one of the key things. So all the trading that traders do 
on an intraday basis is on the hourly charts. Not 15 minutes, not four hours, not the daily, it's the hourly bar charts, right? You can see my charts are very clean. So down below here, you can see that, if I just, uh, let me just bring that up a touch, you can see where that support line is. So sometimes if you're looking at the, the currency, at the current market levels, you think, well, there's not much around, right? I don't, what, what am I looking at here? Um, what I would be doing is, is making sure you know where all the trend lines are. And as I, I've just shrunk up the right hand axis, so you can see where they are. So now you can actually focus very clearly 74.90 on the downside and up here at 76.12. The Aussie in between this has a scope to move higher up towards 76, right? Or split down to 74.90. When it's mid range, the currency can get very loose and trading decisions around this time are not all awesome by any stretch, right? So you know here at the moment, let the Aussie go. There's nothing to do, just wait. All right, so that when it gets close to the trend lines, that's when we focus, right? If you identify the opportunity as having no entry levels, well, you don't really have a trade. But then you can come across, and as you can see, I've got the major currency pairs lined up here. I've got Sterling here in particular. Now, you can see here, actually, Sterling's got a great setup. Now, for trend lines to be confirmed, you need at least three touches. And in this instance, you don't have to be pedantic. Close enough is good enough. So on the downside here in Sterling, down here at 130.60, we've got our second low here at 130.72. That's the start, one, two. Then we've got a low over here corresponding around uh, 132.20, okay? Funnily enough, on the third touch, usually the bankers are trading ahead of it, right? So that it really touches right on. So you've got one, two, three touches. See where Sterling is now. Now there's a lot of things going on in cable. We're waiting for the CPI data. Um, you know, that's coming out shortly, as in over the next day. Then we've got also the Brexit, EU summit. So funnily enough, the currency has drifted lower, but it stopped here. See how it gets sticky around the trend line. This is the barroom brawl in action. As I said, you don't want to get, if you're looking for a break trade here, you would wait for it to drop more than 12 points, 12 or 13 points through that level, and then you would get in. Because what you can get is a situation, if I widen this out, Okay, it's been sitting around here for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hours. Right? If you're sitting in front of the screens for nine hours waiting for a move, you have just wasted nine hours of your life. All right? So just be aware, draw your trend lines. If you've got entry levels, put orders in the market or, or wait for it to get to those levels if you don't have any. Now, as I mentioned, dollar yen is, is the different country in the world for trend lines and technical analysis entry levels. Now I've got trend lines on here as well as the Ichimoku Kinko Ohio cloud. Now the cloud is is a massive giant moving average. Right? This is you've got to understand this is the way Japanese traders trade. And because it's got critical mass, you focus on the Ichimoku cloud, particularly during the Japanese session. Now most of the Japanese traders are classic day traders. They trade during the day and at the evenings they generally close their positions. So when you're looking at the currencies the, the yen, dollar yen, and also the yen crosses, especially during that Asian session, make sure you have a look at the um, where the cloud is. Now, when the cloud is below the currency pair, and at the top of the cloud acts as support, and the bottom of the cloud acts as the as a secondary support level, just like trend lines, right? So, but when the when the uh, currency is below the cloud, it acts as resistance. So just think of the cloud, right, as two support or two resistance levels. And when it breaks down through, say, just at current market levels, where it's breaking down through the cloud a bit, once it breaks down through the cloud, the top of the cloud then acts as, as resistance, exactly the same way as trend lines do. So the Ichimoku Kinko Hyo cloud, it's no different to trend lines. It's just that that's what the Japanese traders look at. And to get an overall aspect of all traders in the market, I include trend lines on my charts to make sure that I'm looking at that from both angles. Where this becomes particularly gorgeous, if you go through um, the uh, advanced pro trader course, okay, on our site, you will actually see the, the Ichiban strategy I've labeled it. It is one of the most highest successful strategies I would use. And that's where the trend lines match, when the trend lines match up with the um, the cloud, that's when you get all traders globally, Japanese and everyone else, 
all trade in the same way, whether it's a break or support level. And that's when you get a really gorgeous trade. And, and what you can do is you can really load up on those opportunities. So don't think the cloud, because you don't understand it, it's hard to understand, it's, it's not. Go through, through the course on our site. It will explain in detail how it works, and then you can take advantage of that as well. All right, so that's pretty much where it is. So what you're doing is, on a daily basis, is you're just scanning your charts, right? Whether it's the, um, the majors, or you're also looking at the European crosses, or, or going through the sterling crosses, and you have all these currency pairs in your charts. You'll notice I always have the Ichi uh, Moku Kinko Higher Cloud on my yen crosses. Of course you have to, right? It's very important that you know exactly where the Japanese traders are placing all their orders as well. But then, you know, looking at your charts, I also consider looking at my um, major currency pairs in, in four different time frames. okay? I've got the hourly time frame here on the left, then the daily, the weekly, and monthly. Now, that gives me perspective on a short-term aspect as well as a long-term aspect because sometimes you can get caught up in the price action and you think, you know what, Euro's going lower here, but you look at the, the daily charts. It's actually just trading sideways. So another good principle to use as you go through the course and you're looking at our daily analysis on our site you'll see that we do use um, four different time frames to give us perspective of long-term versus short-term uh, trends and price action. All right, so that's one way that you can really take a, a, a very close look at the market, at the same time have a look at the longer-term levels, and when you see the longer-term levels breaking down or up, and that's when it's time to get excited because that's a trend break, and if that correlates with a central bank announcement or an economic data release, then that's when you've got a really awesome trade and you do need to load up. You'll soon realise that trading professionally, you're waiting for the good opportunities. Okay, and one of the most important things to do is, is understand you've got to wait for the market to give you the cash. Now, I get a lot of questions around day trading. Can I day trade? Well, of course you can, but only when, when the general market setup provides it. Now, the economic data releases might provide it or good trend lines. If you're trading mid-range and you can go through your charts just like I was doing there before, well, that will give you the answers around what you should be doing and what strategy to use. Technical analysis is simplicity in motion. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't load your charts up with loads of indicators because now you should understand where the direction is coming from and now your charts are going to tell you where to get in. Now it's about fine-tuning your execution and bringing all those components together to fine tune your trading methodology. What is going to happen is you're gonna start trading with the market, not against it. And that's when you're gonna become a successful trader. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this one. Once again, don't forget, if you have any questions, send us an email at info at tradersfortraders.com or jump on the trial, or if you remember, jump into the 247 trade zone and ask the questions that you want the answers for. We're here to help and help you become a successful trader. I hope you've enjoyed this. We've got one last one to go after uh, Christmas. I'm going to bring it all together, and that's going to fine-tune your whole trading system. I look forward to seeing you in 2018. Cheerio.